assembly language. You can see our next topic is gonna to be assembly language. And we're looking at four possible columns. First column is gonna be a label. We'll do some branching to labels. Second column is gonna be one of these things called an op code, which you see listed below. The next column is gonna be a location. And then finally, we're gonna have comments. All right, so let's take a look at what the op codes are first. First one is called load. When I say load, it's gonna take whatever's in this column three and stored in ACC, which is short for accumulator. So we would be loading a value into our accumulator. That's kind of like our RAM. That's where we're gonna be doing all of our thinking. Store, store the contents of the accumulator into location. So if I have store here, I'm gonna store whatever's in the accumulator into a variable name over here. I have add, I have sub, not sum, sub, malt and div, seem to be okay with all of those. We get into some goofy ones. Branch if greater than, branch if equals, branch if less than, branch unconditionally. These are like old school go-tos. Okay, it's gonna make me jump to a location, wherever a label is. So it'll be working with our labels. And we're done. Read, makes sense. That's my only way of doing input. Print, that's my way of doing output. And DC is gonna help me define a constant. So they're all kind of straightforward. Looks very limiting, and it is, but there's quite a bit we can do with just those few opcodes. All right, drum roll. I know you all wanna start at number one. So let's start at number one. Or first, assembly program. It does not say print, hello world. Get it, that was a joke. No, all right. Read A. So I'm gonna have a variable called A. I'm gonna read in the number five. Sorry, number five, read B. Means I'm gonna read in a value and I'm gonna store it in B. Load A, where's it gonna put the value of A? Into the accumulator. So I'm gonna put A into the accumulator. Subtract B, that says take what's in the accumulator and subtract the value of B, five minus negative nine gives me 14. So I read A, I read B, I loaded A, I subtracted B. Branch of greater than, is this greater than zero? Yes. So I'm gonna to branch to the label PDRF. PDRF branches down to this label. It says store this in diff. Store it in diff, print diff. So my output would be 14. You've just done your first assembly program. You want to try the next one? You want me to let you give it a whirl first? Declare constant, so x gets the value of three. Y gets the value of negative two. Z gets the value of negative four. Check, check, check. Uh, 
accumulator gets three. Check. Subtract Z gives me a positive 2. Check. Storing temp 2. Check. Subtract temp 1. Check. Branch if less than to done, it's not. Branch if equals to done, it's not. Load temp 2. Add X and done. I got five. What do you think, Nathan? I got five. Nice. Also, is this just based on a specific version of assembly, or is this just that I what don't is this? That I don't know, but this is what it looked like way back when. And I had a class. Um, it was a languages class back in 1980, and this was one of the languages we looked at. We looked at Lisp. Lisp was goofy. Everybody said it stood for lots of intricate, silly parentheses, but Lisp was an old type of language. Questions? Want to try another one? I think three looks pretty easy, right? Let's do three. Excuse me. Is it six? Harrison says, is it six? Anybody else get six? I got nine. Okay, so I'm loading A, which is five. I'm adding A, which is 10. I am, I loaded A, I added A. I'm adding A again, which is 15. I'm gonna subtract C, which is nine and store it in temp. I got nine. Harrison says, oops. So really all of this is the same as TMP equals three times A minus C. <laughs> Interesting way to do it, huh? More, more, more. Okay, good. Oh boy.
Let's do number four. We're on a roll. I need more paper. Anybody getting fast at these yet? Declare a constant. X gets the value of negative five. Y gets the value of negative three. Check, check. Load in the accumulator. Check, add Y. Add y. So if I add y, I get negative 6. If I add y, I get negative 9. I'm now up to store in 3y. Load x. That's negative 5. Add x, that makes this negative 10. Subtract 3y, makes that negative one. Branch of less than zero to else, which is down here. Oh, load x, negative five. Add y, negative eight. Add y negative 11, store in temp. What's the final value? I have negative 11. Anybody else? Nathan, I can see you on my screen, so I'll pick on you or ask you. G a negative 11? Did I mess up somewhere? Looks right to me. Oh, okay. Ryan, you're on my screen. Did you get negative 11? I think. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Could you write this in pseudocode? If I asked you to write this, what would it be? Three Y equals Y plus Y plus Y. ACC equals x plus x minus 3y if ACC is less than 0, I would go to temp <laughs> equals x plus y plus y else so if it was less than else, um, I add 3y, ACC equals ACC plus 3y, and then store that in temp, temp equals ACC kind of deal. Something along those lines.
All right, we're going to do one more. This one's with a loop. I'm going to pause the recording and give you a couple minutes to work on it because I feel like I'm doing all the work. So give number five a try. Anybody have an answer? No. CT gets a value of 10. X gets a value of 1. Y gets a value of 1. One. On. I almost got an answer. Okay. I got 144 and 89. You have two answers? For X and Y. 144 for X. Uh, what will the value be stored at Y? So what was Y? Um, 89. I hear an 89. Anybody else get an 89? Uh-oh. Kenny, what'd you get? He's not telling. Hopefully people didn't fall asleep. Mark, what'd you get? Um, I think I got, uh, you said for Y? Yeah. I got, I think one, but I'm not sure if that's right. Okay. Tan, what did you get? I also stopped at one. I'm not so sure I'm right. Okay. I'm I'm right. All right, let's see what we have. So I'm gonna store in temp. So my accumulator is two. I just stored it in temp. I'm going to load X, which is one. I'm going to store in Y, so that one becomes a one. I'm going to load temp, which is two. I'm going to store in X, so this now is a two. I'm going to load CT, which is 10. Okay, I'm gonna subtract one, which makes this a nine. I'm gonna store here, so that's a nine. Um, I just stored it in CT. A branch of greater than, my accumulator is nine, so I branch back up the loop. And I'm allowed to draw all kinds of lines and things in here if I want to. So counter is basically doing what for me? It's running a loop how many times? Because each time counter, counter down here, load counter, and counter's in my accumulator. And if it's greater than, if it's greater than, I branch back up to loop. So the next time at the end of all of this, I'm gonna load counter in, subtract one again, and loop back around. So this loop is gonna run 10 times. Next time through, let's see, I load X. This is one. I add, excuse me, this is two. I add one, which gives me three. I store it in temp, which is three. So I did this, did this, stored it in temp. I'm gonna load X. I load two. I'm gonna store that in Y. I'm gonna load temp, which is three. Store that in X. I'm going to load CT, which is not, I know what this part right here does, right? That part right there says, make that an eight. Load it, subtract one, store it back in CT. Come back up, round three, load X. X is now three, add Y, I now get five. Okay, so I'm, I added Y, I store in temp, so this is now five. Okay, I load X, which is three, I store that in Y, 
I load temp, which was the five, store that in X. So it looks like this is gonna go one, two, three, five. This is gonna go one, two, three, five. So what do you think my next number here would be? Eight. Seven. Yeah, and if I look, one and one gave me two, one and two gave me three, two and three. Yeah, I think this is gonna be an eight. eight. The next times two. So this would become five, this would become eight. Then this would become eight, this would become 13. So it looks like I keep looping around combining those and I would go all the way to, ha ha ha. Yeah, this was actually a harder one, pretty hard in my opinion. Oh, there's lots of good ones. I'm just trying to get to the answer for number five. Could it be 89? Number five is 89. Nathan, you are a winner. So I add and get 21, 34, 55, 89. It's almost a little bit like the, um, sort of a little bit like the, uh, what is it? The Fibonacci sequence kind of thing being built there. All right, any questions?